Hello everyone and welcome to the Dice Commando YouTube channel. I'm Andrew with you here as always. This is the Commando Cast, a video cast about all things Star Wars Destiny. This video and others like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. Please show your support with a like and subscribe and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. If you want to get involved with the channel, consider becoming a channel member. There are many benefits to channel membership including access to our Discord, exclusive deck tech and strategy videos, and the opportunity to help create channel content. I want to sincerely thank all our channel members, as I truly couldn't do this without your support. You guys rock. Go Commando. Hey Destiny folks, welcome, and man, what a weekend. High stakes release weekend, uh, a lot of excitement just around that in general. But we also had the the release tournament earlier today, six rounds of Swiss, and then a, the top eight cut. I wanted to cover that and then you know, kind of give my, my very, very early thoughts about the set. Um, I was right about some stuff, but I was wrong about a lot of other stuff. So let's let's get into it. Hey folks, welcome back to Dice Commando. Andrew here, and thanks thanks for joining me. I've we've all seen a lot of each other this weekend, uh, but I, I had a really good time. I, I've really enjoyed uh, the early part of the set. I, I jokingly kind of said that I burned through majority because you guys know I still write stuff out because I'm an old old man. Uh, I jokingly said I burned through most of a binder, and like I kind of actually wasn't joking. Like I burned through quite a bit doing deck building and theorizing going into Saturday, I was able to, you know, swing personal stuff. So I was able to play, which was really, really awesome. Um, thank you to my, thank you to my amazing parents for stepping up there. Uh, anyway, so yeah, what I wanted to do tonight was I wanted to kind of recap the, the, the tournament itself. Now, what I'm not going to do is go blow by blow on my rounds. Like you, you know, I, I finished, I did okay. I was pleased, but you know, I didn't top anything. Uh, but what I did want to do, I've got some graphics I went through and made and just kind of summarized the, 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 at least the top 16. And then I kind of wanted to, you know, like I said in the intro, I, I made some predictions going in based on, on what I saw and what I thought was going to be good. Some of them were just flat out wrong and others were right on. Um, but I, I still think that the, the results of the tournament, I think, surprised a lot of us. Not so much in who topped right? Because we saw a lot of familiar names up on top. But I, I think that the overall breakdown, I think, was a little surprising. Uh, you know, but but with all that said, and with this next thing said, I'm really, really happy with the way thing, thing, things went this week. And I know that might, I, I mean, I, I, I think it's really cool, but I want to put that in context, right? So everybody out there who, who's not happy with it, I completely understand. I want to, I just want to put in context that you know, one of my favorite one of my favorite decks in Destiny. One of the times I was enjoying Destiny most was I was playing the Snot out of Poe Hondo, right? And it was a very you know it was red, red yellow hero, and it was fast, and you could play planetary, and you could put pressure on your opponent, and there was a race to claim the battlefield, and and I really enjoyed that aspect of it, and that is for many of the decks today that I played against at least, and many of the deck I mean, and it holds with many of the decks that are in the top. Uh, that holds right. So we have we have a very fast aggroy game. Now, that's not a huge massive statement early on. Like you typically see aggro do well early on, but it was a little more aggroy aggro today, right? I mean, I think I think that's a fair statement, right? Which I, I think was to be fully expected, right? I mean, you put up Den like with a three die, like you, I mean three die with fourteen health, like his job is to put out damage before he dies. I mean, that's kind of what aggro does, anyway. So like, 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 like I said, I, I am happy. Well, I, I mean, I'm not like happy because, you know, it's me, right? But I, I, I enjoyed today. I had a great time today. Um, I, you know, I, I know there's others out there that didn't, but we've, we've spent the last, you know, three months in a very heavy control. Well, with the exception of the whole Vader thing, we've spent the last three months or so in a very heavy control meta and today it was just pew, 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 right? I mean, there wasn't a many, there weren't, there weren't many melee sides to be found except for that, you know, occasional one that you'd roll on the Mando, right? So anyway, let's, let's go into the breakdown and kind of, you know, go into what I'm talking about. So uh, what I'm showing right now, this is the top 16, I mean, included the deck. So Vika, this is the top 16 of Swiss. 
then there was a top eight cut. I was really happy I didn't make the top eight, so I didn't have to lose first round on stream like I always do. But so Benthic, or, or sorry, Vika was Benthic Wedge Stay Ahead. Uh, I want to talk a bit about Stay Ahead later. Beacon Fire was Jin Han Spies. Uh, uh, Mechfag, I, I love you guys. Mechfag, Jin Han Spice, uh, Rainmaker, and Moloch were also on Jin Han Spice. So we had one, two, three, four of those in the top nine. Uh, Lord, Lord Shishio was Mando Wookie United. I saw that. That was actually a pretty cool deck. Uh, Royal Sabak was playing Mando Protect the Child, which is, I'm actually, I mean, we know Royal Sabak's a good player, um, but I was surprised that, I was surprised on that one. Uh, Ryan, I, I had a, I've played him a lot, won, beat him, lost to him. I actually beat him today, uh, but he took five. So I guess I was his only loss on the day. I didn't realize that. Uh, Ryan was Dak Transformation Son, Stay Ahead. Uh, Rock and Troll, who, who won the whole thing after the cut, he was on Mandel Rebel Sniper. Rain, oh, we already did Rain Mirror from uh, Hip Gangster is on Benthic Wedge Stay Ahead, as well as Flying Dad Bomb at 12 and Kylo Sprin. Uh, both the DO uh, Dice of Failure boys uh, came back and they were running um, the same deck. Uh, that I was at 11 with Dash Wedge. I very easily could have not been, and Davey could have been in my spot, also playing Dash Wedge. It just came down to, basically, he god-rolled himself off the table. You guys will have to check that out. Uh, Vaunts, who beat me in Swiss, uh, Haunt was playing Doc, or Hondo, Dr. Remnant Reset. And then Pambus, oh, sorry, Gringo was on Gideon Grindon. And Pambus was on Dak, Transformation Taunt, Stay Ahead, and so on. So um, one of the things that I saw over the tournament is is I am a little so well bre breaking down where we're at right we you'll notice there's a lot of hero up there which that was one of the things I was wrong at first I thought Inquisitors gonna be were gonna be really really strong uh, looks like the way to go early at least looks like the way to go today was guns now is that because it's the best thing or is it because everybody wanted to play um, probably both. Right. I mean, you're not you're going to want to play something that looks good, but also is fun. So if you know, if you can either play Inquisitors or if you can play a bunch of fast guns. I mean, I'll play fast guns all day long. Right. I mean, it's, you saw what I brought. So, um, yeah, but I, I was I was surprised about the villain breakdown, the, the hero villain breakdown. Right. The, we only had one. Well, we had two with Hondo, but Hondo's neutral. But I mean, it's technically a villain deck. So we only had what, two? in the top 16 is that right i think so right so that's i mean we had when's the last time when's the last time we could say that we had a hero heavy meta it was probably milpocalypse right probably that may not be completely accurate but i mean the the concepts there so Anyway, that's that's very interesting part. Now, one of the th now moving to the next part. What one of the things I saw was, um, and this may have been just bias because of what I ran up against, which is completely fair. We'll have to see how it turns out over time. I'm not calling for OP or nerf or anything like that. But crate dragon, the crate dragon layer, is uh, really really good, and it's really really it's especially really 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 good with benthic. Right, so I always preferred Cyber Center with Benthic because it was always a one value, right? Regardless, and Crate Dragon is always, and it's probably always a 0.7 value because they could claim and deal the two indirect, but you can pay them, right? Or you don't actually, sorry, you don't pay them, you just pay, not them, right? Which is a big deal. So uh, those two with Benthic is, or that that card, not those two, the two indirect with Benthic is what I mean is is really really strong. So. I I saw that battlefield a lot today. Um, though I did I did break down the battlefields because so that's what I'm showing now is I broke down the battlefields. It wasn't overall um, as skewed as I thought it was going to be. So I mean, it clearly just was the way it broke down for me. But we had salt flats on there a couple times. Uh, we did have one, two, three, four crate dragon layers. So I guess it was the most prevalent, but not. I mean, at 25 percent, that's. Right, so I was a little surprised on that. Like I said, my own personal skew was I was like, man, I ran up against that all day. Um, but it, you know, in the, it's very clear in the top sixteen that it wasn't um, overall. So that that is something I do think we need to keep our eye on. That battlefield is uh, 
in a fast meta like this, it's really good, right? So especially with Benthic and his ability to do what he does if you claim, right? So, and then, I mean, you combine that with stay ahead. Stay ahead is also something that I think probably we need to keep an eye on. I, again, I'm not saying it's too good, um, but it, it is, um, it's really good. Right, especially with Benthic. Like I, I can't it's one of those things like worth pyre. I can't see taking pyre and not relentless. It's kind of a thing where at this point, like I can't see really taking Benthic and not stay ahead and the battlefield and the Great Dragon, right? So um I think those are gonna be I think those are gonna be big um for a while. So yeah, overall I, I think that um I mean it, it's it's no secret that aggro always reigns early, right? Especially because I I think there are plenty of I mean, look at the you know the 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 Doctor Remnant, whatever the hell his name is, right? Sorry, Doctor Remnant's what I call it, but that's what I keep calling because I like that name. But Doctor Remnant, where he can bring your guys back. Um, I think I lost that game that I played because I went for him first because I was worried about the guy coming back. Um, but I'm wondering if that wasn't the wrong play. He's there's a lot of really cool stuff going on there. With Dr. Remnant. There's some really, really scary stuff out there with General. General is a really, really scary card. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of potential mill decks pop up with that, or at least, you know, control style decks. So I think that stuff just needs time to develop, right? I mean, and that's pretty standard for the way things are. Um, so I, I know there's a lot of, you know, I, I heard not a lot of, but I heard some feedback. It's like, wow, this is pretty pew pew aggro. Yes, it was. The, de- the data very clearly says it was pew pew aggro, um, but it's it's early, and I think the I think the curve on this. I mean, when you have that strong a pew pew aggro early, yeah, it, the curve's going to be much higher for the controlly stuff to figure it out. But there's a lot of really good tools out there for control, or mill, or whatever. I mean, a headstrong power of the triad; those are still there. Like so, and the money curve's higher. I, I think there's definitely a lot of options out there. Um, there are a lot of potential out there, I should say, for, you know, control to take over over the next couple of weeks. So I think this is going to be one of those things where um, I wouldn't be surprised if in like two to three weeks, it looks like we have a pretty clear like winner or a pretty clear top four, but it gets upset within the next couple of weeks after that, right? So like this is probably one of those situations that barring something that's just completely busted um the only thing i'm seeing now that might potentially be there is like great dragon layer like i i think i think that one with i just i don't think that any one of the pieces of benthic stay ahead and create dragon layer i don't think any one of them individually are a problem but i think combined that might be a problem so maybe they fix it there but but again like i said there's a lot of places to go so like i said or like i'm trying to say maybe i not did say um I think, you know, I think we're going to have a couple pieces that within you know, three weeks to a month that we have some community stuff be like, yeah, this might be a problem. Uh, but I, I probably think that, I mean, I probably, I mean, we know they kind of do their hold the course and they don't really change things until about halfway through anyway, until there's about something that's a problem. And I think they'll address it then and um, do a rebalance. But again, I, I kind of expect there to be, right, because one of the worst things they can do would be to do what they don't want to do generally, right? Let's say four weeks in, we have some problem, you know, we have some set meta like I was talking about, and then they they do, right? That would be about the same time frame, you know, three, four weeks in, a couple tournaments under our belt, maybe Artificery League starts coming around, and we start to see the controlly decks swing in. What we don't want to do at the same time the controlly decks swing in is knock something else down, and then as a control decks are on the way up, everything else is on the way down, and then we go into a you know mill apocalypse or a lockdown meta, because that's not going to be good either, right? So, um, you know, I, I think that I think we're I don't, I don't know I I've gone way down the rabbit hole in terms of talking way ahead, but I, I I think that what we saw again, my bias is very very strong with the way that I like to play Destiny right now. I, I completely throw that out there, right? And you may feel very very differently. But I think we're in a pretty good spot because what you want to see early, you want to see aggro early. Because if you don't see aggro early, you are going to be in a Millpocalypse-esque meta, right? And I I think that's what we're seeing. So, again, we'll we'll have to see. um, You know, and the stuff I was wrong about, like I talked about, 
some so to to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, right? Some of the stuff I was wrong about, like thinking Inquisitors were going to be really, really strong today. I'm going to be really curious to see how that develops over the next two weeks. That that one I think is going to be very interesting. And I don't mean specifically Inquisitors, but like I saw like no Kara today, and I saw very I saw I saw no Inquisitors. I saw no Kara Dune today, and I thought those were going to be really, really strong going in. And again, maybe that's just the way I like to play Destiny and you know putting in a perspective of what I saw. But I was really surprised to see kind of a lack of those cards today, right? And I I do think that's interesting. And you know, looking at again, I I'm wrong all the time, right? You guys know that. But looking at why I was wrong, I think is interesting because you know if I, I think it really just boils. I think all of this, like if you look at the top sixteen today. What it really boils down to, in my opinion, is quote unquote, good stuff destiny, right? People were just packing all of the good, reliable stuff together. Like you look at, like Jen has been, you know, FA Jen has been kind of worthless, right? She's been very hard to work. And all of a sudden she got a partner that helps her lock down. And it was it even the partner? Maybe. Or was it like general, Right. I think that, it, and it's probably both, right? But we've seen Jen pop up out of nowhere because she finally got what she needed or got some stuff to make her better, right? Not necessarily what she needed. And maybe Jen goes away in a couple weeks again. I, I don't know. But we're seeing a lot of, we're seeing a lot of this stuff that's that's really, really cool coming out here, right? I mean, Rebel Sniper was a, like, I thought Rebel Sniper was awesome. Yeah, I'd never seen him. All of a sudden he does well with Mando, right? And I don't know. This is uh, it's it's very. I think it's very interesting to see kind of where this comes out. Um, the one thing, the one thing I do have to say, and I want to be very clear, I played the guy right because, like I like I was talking about the whole the whole point of this little thread here was good stuff, destiny, right? What you're seeing is people who are just pairing really good stuff with really good stuff, right? Wedge, for example, I, I'm actually really surprised that I, I was really surprised. I thought Mando Wedge was going to be really, really strong. And somebody, or it was Eric, Eric on Dice Commando, he's like, well, why Why did you think that was going to be strong? Because both of them are like, like I think Mando at 18 is better value than, I, than Mando at 22. And I think Mando at 18 is really good. And I think Wedge is probably a 14-point character, right? So... The two, I was surprised that the two of them together didn't didn't make waves, but maybe it was just that there was so much other synergy elsewhere. So I, I was a little surprised to see not as much wedge, but it's it's potential that just early, the way that the pairings worked were that people were playing wedge in other places. Like, I mean, I did decide to go dash instead of Mando, right? If I thought action cheating would be a little better in what I expected to be an aggro meta, and I made the right meta call there. Um yeah, I don't know. So, right, I do know. Actually, I, I'm happy. I, I think today was good. Um, I'm happy with where things are early. Um, you know, if this is, and I want to be very clear, if this is where, you know, if we're in a pure aggro meta for the rest of the meta, I, I do think that's probably not great. But I don't want to be in a spot where controls like it control only gets better because control figures out over time how to beat aggro. And if we are in a position where control has an advantage early, for, 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 for example, in one of the DC team videos I made last week on what to play this weekend, I, I was specifically saying if you're looking, cause, cause again, I was wrong, but if I was looking at inquisitors, which I thought was going to be good, I was saying, I think that early you go with the Grand Inquisitor Ninth Sister because you don't have to worry about trying to figure out all the sequencing of the specials with Second Sister and all that, right? And just in terms of learning curve, right? Now, that's a very vacuumed and simple example, but it kind of feeds into my point of it takes time to learn the synergies and it takes time to learn exactly what to do and fit those other cards, those niche cards into those small slots, right? So that's more what I was saying in, in terms of this is that, you know, People are going to go with just the good stuff that's kind of more straightforward and just kind of hits hard in the face. And over time, right? So over time, that Inquisitor deck, I do believe, is going like I do believe the better pairing in the Inquisitor deck is the Second Sister one, right? 
but early, I would generally go with Night Sister just to pump out more damage early. And, and that's kind of what I'm trying to say about the whole meta in general, right? If you can take that analogy and draw the lines to the entire meta in general is that, you know, early you're going to go with what's easier and more straightforward and you're going to develop it over time. So I, I think, again, I, again, I, like I said, I, I'll, I'll let this go and I'm say, you know, say I'm biased, be very clear, right? The, you know, planetary, actually, it isn't a side. I think that kind of speaks to maybe my concern with Great Dragons. Like, remember we used to have Planetary Uprising, and like that could cause some problems. And Great Dragon Lair is that. I mean, but it's a battlefield that both people can claim. So I don't know. But I mean, you build your deck around speed. I don't know. But I, I do think there's an argument to be made there that when you look at Planetary Uprising and then you look at Great Dragon Lair, that you know, in the old world, we paid two for the advantage of doing it. But I mean, both can claim. I mean, so I'm not making a direct comparison between the two, but I but I do think it's relevant that we used to spend an entire turn for the ability to deal two at the end of a round when we claimed. So I do think that's actually relevant there. Um, but it's it's not it's not it's not a direct comparison. But I, I I do think it's relevant. So I don't know. We'll have to see how things turn out. Um, but I'm really excited. So it's about the 19th time we've said that. So it's probably time to get out of here. But Again, I, I, I really had a good time today. I mean, four and two is not amazing. I was happy with how things went, but, you know, good good times, good times. The I'm really, really happy about this set. I've got at least 15 decks to try over the next couple of weeks. Um, and it's probably one of those things where I'm not going to be able to get to all the decks before the meta shifts, right? I, I think that's probably fair to say. Because I really do think it's going to shift, and I really do think we're going to get in a good spot. So, again, thank you to the guy thank you to aaron and his team for the development huge thank you to gandork for running the tournament today it's a lot of work uh he at the end i thought this was hilarious he at the end said huge shout out to ttt for not pooping on us i agree it's the first time i've seen it pooped on us for the last dc and for the last infinite tournament that i did for arh2 we have a bad tracker with that so that was really awesome but seriously though gandork thank you uh lanza your your wheel keeps us all happy so anyway at this point thank you to everybody i played today everybody let me record we've got videos coming over the next couple days that'll do it for tonight folks go commando